Simon Khan here, four seconds out with big Johnny Fisher. Johnny, how you doing, sir? Good, thanks, mate. How are you? All good? Yeah, not too bad. All the better for speaking to you, Johnny. Sure, look at me. <laughs> You're looking great. You were over in America again, sparring. Talk to me about the, the, the sparring journey you had over yeah, there. Really good with uh, Carlos Takam and uh, Jeremiah Milton. They were the two people I was sparring. 8-0 and heavyweight. And obviously Takam, who's still mixing it at world level, fighting uh, Yoka on the same day as me. So good, hard, horrible rounds. You know, with someone like Takam, you get you feel there's a level of experience there. Do you feel yeah. that when you spar him, that experience coming through? Yeah, and do. what is it? You do feel it. You feel like he's managing himself at points and he's trying to lure you in. Like You might feel, oh, I'm getting comfortable here. And he's just all the time setting you up for an overhand right or something like that. So you might be landing some nice three or four jabs. Oh, yeah, I'm getting it, I'm getting him. But my, my hand might go low and I've got to pull out and get away from that overhand right. That was the main thing. You still fire that overhand right nice and quick, you know? When you have sparring, you have that sparring set up, do you set yourself spar goals when you go through it or just kind of throw yourself in there and learn? I'm learning. I'm throwing myself in a little bit in a minute because I've never done eight rounds before, so I've been sparring a lot of rounds and it's just about, right, how's my body reacting now? How's my body reacting now? So that's what I've got. Uh, I've never done eight rounds before in my life, like sparring. I probably I probably have. I've done a couple of eight rounds, but not full on, like with two two big heavyweights or one big heavyweight, eight rounds full on. So that's what I've learned about myself this camp. I've just got to keep progressing and making that tank last as long as it can. When it comes to heavyweights and heavyweights like yourself, who are impressive in each outing. The boxing public wants to see them get tested, 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 tested. Where do you feel you are right now in your uh, boxing career? Well, I could be fighting people with five wins and 20 losses still, and like a lot of people do, or like with negative records or half and half records, but I think it suits me to be fighting these guys who are three and one or seven and three, and this guy six and two, you know. People that are still gonna give me something to think about, but it allows me to, exploit something because they're going to come forward and have a go and have a bit of ambition. Sometimes like my fifth fight, you're fighting a guy who's 11 and 13, you think, oh, look, that's an easier fight. Well, it's not because they've been in with high level opposition. They know how to survive. They know how to smoke screen you. So there's different things and different challenges. So at the minute, I'm enjoying fighting people with a bit of ambition who are going to come to win because that suits me as well. You feel you're going to get that from Alfonso Damiani this weekend? Yeah, yeah, I definitely do. He comes in as a guy who's a very proud man. I saw him fight um, one of his last fights. He got dropped in the first round, but he stuck it out for the whole fight and stayed in there. So he's not one of these guys who's going to come in, take a shot and think, oh, that's it. He's going to be around there to try and win. Domestically, the heavyweight division is fluid. It's moving, it's moving. Yeah. Towards the end of the year, where do you want to be? Is there a, is there a title hunt on the line, um, in the road, sorry? Uh, I'll just think about, I've got to do an eight rounder first, then I'll probably have two or three more eight rounders. And then you are in sort of title contention, whether that's the end of this year or next year. I think I've got to set my goals small because you try and set your goals too big, say English or British, I've got to win a southern area. I think that's what I've got to aim for at some point at the end of the year or next year. But even that is a long way off yet. I've got to fight a guy who's 6-2 and two on Saturday who's prepared for six weeks. So I've got to be ready to rock and roll. I witnessed the Fisher Army growing and growing. How many tickets have you sold this time round? 800. 800. 800 Bosch soldiers from all over England coming over. We've also got some Irish Bosch soldiers coming over as well. But it's good, we've got support, not only people coming to watch, but I'm not, I'm not joking, the amount of supporters we've got in Australia, I don't know if it's because of me or Big John, but there's a whole Australian contingent of Bosch soldiers out there, which is great, and Canada as well, and Belgium as well. I was walking around Belgium in Christmas time, and I was going, Johnny, run for ball. And I was like, she's fucking mental. Sorry for swearing, but it's, uh, it's, it's good that people want to come and support. In this current climate as well, money's hard to come by. They're still supporting you. That must be some, some beautiful feeling. That's what I mean. I'm very appreciative of that because when you come to Liverpool, if you're coming from down south, you've got to buy a train ticket. You've got to book a hotel. You've got to sort of travel, for, not only for yourself, but if your kids are at home as well, you've got to look after them. So I'm very, very grateful for everyone who's turning, turning up and buying a ticket. I really appreciate it. I also make sure when I go up north or somewhere different, but I'll try and give a little bit back to the uh, local community. So I gave about six or I think it was eight tickets to a little amateur boxing club. I auctioned off a couple of tickets to, for funds for a local hospital. So I think when you do little things like that, it goes a long way as well. Fair play to Johnny, brilliant sentiment there. Johnny, go get your thoughts on a couple of things in the heavyweight division, first of all. Uh, right at the top here, Furibus Usyk, we're hoping to get it, but we're not getting it right now. What's your thoughts on it? Um, these fights take months to make. They take six months, sometimes even a year. So. I just said it to someone over there, you, you can't get too delved into all these negotiations, you don't know what's true, what's not, let's just hope they get it made because it's a great fight for the fans and it's a great fight for the boxing public as well. And I'm sure Usyk's team will say one thing, Tyson's team will say another thing, we don't know what's going on, so just leave them to it and uh, we can commentate on it and have comments on it, but they'll sort it out when the money's right. 
your favourite out of the two? Tyson Fury, I think. Listen, Usyk, one of the best of our era, but a good big and beats a good little and Tyson Fury is the top of the pile for me. Andy Joshua takes on Jermaine Franklin April 1st. Your thoughts on that fight? A uh, great little fight. I think Jermaine Franklin uh, was hard done by not to get that decision. It was a close fight against Dillian White. Um, and he won't just sit down and be an easy knockover job for Joshua, which he could have had coming back after a couple of losses to Usyk. But he'll come and give it a good go. I just think Joshua's got too much power for him. Joyce versus Zhang, big fight there, good fight. Great fight as well. Great fight for the fans. Uh, two big guys, one heavy, one southpaw, one orthodox. I think it'll be good for four or five rounds and then Joe will just be a bit too much for him. Put you on the spot here, Dylan White. Who would you like to see Dylan White in against? Um, Francis Ngannou or Derek Chisora. What in like a hybrid boxing MMA Maybe. rule? Maybe, or just Francis Ngannou might just want to be thrown in and uh, have a 10 rounder or something with uh, Dylan White straight away. I think that'd be a good match up, good uh, payday for both guys as well. So I think a lot of people are tuning in to watch that as well. That's one thing we've got to learn from. I don't like a lot of it, but I do like some of it. There's misfits and YouTuber boxing crossovers, personalities, it sells as well. So putting a match up like that, people want to watch it. So why not? You followed Francis Ngannou's career? I've, I've met him a couple of times when I sparred over in Vegas. I saw him spar Joe Joyce and I saw him the last time I was in Vegas in the summer. Um, I haven't followed too much, but I know he can seriously punch. So put him in the mix if he wants to get involved and he, he's confident of himself. So put him in the mix with Dillian White. It's a great fight. When you saw those spars between Joyce and Ngannou, did that fill you with confidence that Ngannou can come over to here and have success in boxing? I don't read too much into Joe Joyce's sparring, because sometimes he's sometimes you spar him and he's taking it very easy. Sometimes he's going for it. But listen, he won't get in uh, destroyed by Joe, but that ain't me saying that Joe's uh, struggling in there. He's probably just coasting a little bit. But I think there is a big gulf in skill level when you go from one sport to the other. So it'll be interesting to see. But the one thing Francis Ngannou's got is that knockout power. So he's got, a, he's got a good chance in there with any of them top guys if he lands that punch. John, you're still young. Do you ever consider kind of some MMA training? No. I don't fancy getting my arm snapped off, to be honest. Um, getting punched in the face is bad enough. But listen, it's a different sport. I, I'm a boxing fan. I like boxing. I think boxing is the king. I think the best athletes will go, in, the best uh, combat athletes will go into boxing because that's where, that's where the money is. And if the money's there, it's probably where the best guys are. But that doesn't mean I don't have a huge admiration for how much hard work the UFC guys and the PFL guys put in because uh, they're very, very skilled at what they do. And it's different to boxing, but still entertaining for them. I'm going to ask you, it's a hot button topic, this Conor Ben Piers Morgan interview, did you catch it? What did you think of it? Yeah, I did catch it and um, I feel I, I'm a big fan of Conor Ben. I like Conor Ben. I've met him, he's very friendly to my family and I, if I'm being honest, a lot of people ask me and I don't want to comment on his situation because I don't know the full facts. We know what the, the Board of Control think, we know what has come out. There might be more for him to come out. We know what he's doing with his lawyers and for me, I hope that justice is served, whether he's been a, uh, found guilty or not. But. I'm hoping that he's not found guilty and I hope that he is telling the truth and that everything comes out to support him because I'm a big Conor Ben fan and I want to see him do well. I'll leave the final word with you. What can people expect to see uh, when they see you step through the ropes this weekend? They can expect me to see you give 110%. I've put everything into it and just know when you see me fight, I've, I've given it my all. That's all I can say. And hopefully that will end with a victory for us in the Romford Army. Bye. It's funny, pleasure speaking to you. Thanks for your second out. Much appreciate it, sir.